Hey guys, it's Robin, R. Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Today we are going to square up this baby quilt that I just quilted last week with y'all. And I'm just going to go and show you the process that I do. I am self-taught. I kind of figure these things out on my own, so I'm probably doing things differently than what you're used to seeing. And I'm sure I'm doing something wrong, but it works for me. I've gone ahead and I removed all the pins. It's been pin basted and quilted, so we no longer need those. I don't do a stay stitch around the edge of my quilt. Sometimes when I'm quilting, like free motion, I'll quilt all the way to the edge. On this one, I didn't do any quilting along the edge of it. More than likely, I'm going to be trimming a little bit of that black off just to even it all up. This quilt goes from top to bottom like this. So right now we're looking at it. The quilt runs this way, but I got it going this way to trim it. So this is the top and the bottom part of it. I don't do the thing where you do borders and you measure it all up and stuff like that. I just say if I want a three inch border, I go ahead and I cut it at four inches and it gives me extra room so that instead of having a wavy border, I just trim off the extra. I'm never going for an exact quilt measurement. I'm not following a pattern most of the time. And if I do follow a pattern, I tend to change it up six different ways and it's never the same anyway. So as I said, I'm just gonna walk you through what I do. Take it with a grain of salt. If it's not what you're used to doing and it looks completely wrong to you, then you don't have to follow it. That's perfectly fine. But this is just how I do it. I just have these little rickety old card table, not a card table, but those long like crafting tables. This is an old one. They're now black and plastic and stuff. You can pick them up at Walmart pretty cheap. I have my regular cutting mat and I always save my old cutting mat. A lot of it's good along the edges. It's just the inside that's all kind of chunked up and stuff like that. So I like to use that when I'm quilting. But I just take it and I put my good cutting mat first. And I slide the other one up and I just match it up. So as I'm cutting and stuff, if I go beyond it, or if I do want to choose to go ahead and cut on this one, it's perfectly fine. I have cut my table before, so I like to have the two cutting mats out. Some people like to use a square 12 and a half or whatever ruler they have to square up. We're gonna be dealing with a little bit of the light. It's awful gloomy again today. So I have to have a few different lights on here. So they use this to square up their corners. I usually just use my six inch by 24 inch ruler and I just use that. And I make sure when I'm trimming things up that I square up my corners that way. So whatever ruler you're used to using, go ahead and use that. I just go ahead and use this one. So that's what I'm gonna use today. I've got my rotary cutter. You can put a new blade in if you want. Mine's not too old and we'll hopefully it'll work today. We'll see if it's too dull, then I'll put a new one in. So I like to have my quilt so that it just hangs over the table one side or the other. I like to start on this corner away from me. Just roll it down. As you can see, I have all of these different edges. It's just wherever it finished off on the side, I just left it because I knew I would just trim it up today. I went for the somewhere around the 36 by 42, 42 by 36, however it works up so I can just use one yard of fabric as the backing. So my rows ended up as how they did. I have this side that is a little bit more even, so we'll start with this side. Now you and I have to share this space, so we're gonna be fighting for it. I apologize in advance if I bump you at all. Now from what I understand, People will go ahead and put their rulers on here and line things up this way and that way to get their even, you know, their perfect corner there. I tend to straighten mine up as I go. So I don't necessarily do a corner, I do side by side. So for this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up a mark on my ruler with this black strip right here so that I'm going to go ahead and square it all off based on this. If I had blocks set up, I would go ahead and square it up based on my block or my sashing. So right now I'm going to consider these black lines right here, my sashing. So I have it lined up here and then I'm going to look here and I'm going to see how that's lined up because quilts, quilts have a little bit of movement to them. You can go ahead and stretch them a little. I have seen videos where they go ahead and they block a quilt. They actually get it wet and they stretch it like you would a knit project to get it to all work out and fit nicely. 
So when I go to line up this line right here, I notice that I can't get a perfect line here. So instead of lining it up from this one, I'm going to switch up to this one. So on the inside of this, I'm going to line it up and see where it looks there. And it looks like I can go ahead and line that up. Just kind of tug and pull my quilt just a little bit. Because what I've learned is when it's laying on the table, it can get all scrunchy, it can get all out of shape. So I can just give that little extra tug and pull to move it to where I want. And I'm just going to trim just a little bit on here, just so that I have something to square off of when I go that way. Okay, so I have a nice little line right there. It's a nice little straight line. So then when I switch my ruler to this direction, I can line up my black line down here at the bottom. And I can also find a line somewhere along here that I can line up on this last black strip. And I'm not gonna worry if I'm going to cut some of it off. So if I line it up here at one and three quarters, I can see I have some batting still there. And I also see that this black dips down below. So I can give this a little bit of a pull and see if that's going to bring it out enough. And it's not. So I can go down an eighth. Or I can just go down to a one and a half. Line up my black line at the end still. And then just kind of give this a tug so that whatever I need is right there. Now remember, I told you guys, I'm self-taught. This is just something how I figure it out that works for me. I am not doing quilts that are going in shows. My quilts are going on someone's bed to be loved. So I just scooch my quilt this way or I pull it that way to line it up at one and a half inches. And when I get it where I like it, I pop a weight on it. And I only go as far as I feel comfortable as I said, this quilt, it, it has its own movement of its own. It seems to not lay perfectly flat on my table. I've got it hanging over the edge, so it's being pulled that way. It could be all crooked down at this end where you can't see it. So I just do my best to line it up. And then I would go ahead and run my rotary cutter. But I, hold on, I got to go around you guys. It's along. So I just run my rotary cutter. Now that I see that everything looks good, I just run it along. Double check to make sure nothing's moved. I can always slide my weight up a little bit. And now I'm gonna go right across from one mat to the other. This section of my pink purple mat is gonna be fine to use. I go slow right here in case I have a little dip. And I only go to the 23 inches. So my ruler is 24 inches. I don't wanna go, I have a little nick in my blade. I dropped it. This is, I dropped my rotary cutter on the cement floor, got a nick in the blade, brand new blade, put a new blade in, and the next one just came with a nick in it. So I'm just dealing with it. But I want to stop right there. I don't want to go all the way to the end of my ruler because I know that maybe I've, I've nicked it and I've chunked it. I, I've bashed it on the floor or the wall. Who knows what I could have done to this ruler to make those corners not quite at a perfect degree. I would normally just keep walking along the table with my ruler because I have plenty of room with this small of a quilt, but you guys won't be able to see it then. So I'll just slide it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the side of my ruler with the edge of the quilt, and I'm just going to move it if I need to, because once again, I've got parts of it hanging off the table that way. I'm going to look and follow because I know I put it at one and a half inches on here. See if I get it to keep it on that mark. Which means I have to wiggle it around a little bit. It, I mean, this is not going to be a three second job. It's going to take a little bit. I can put a weight on it down here to hold that spot because that spot's perfect. And then I can just pull this one up off the floor. Bunch it up a little bit here. You guys can hold it for me, right?
And I know at the end here, it's got a little bit of a this going on and I'm not gonna worry about it because I know I'm gonna trim this off when I trim this really wonky side. I just go ahead and trim it all off. Now this side's got salvages and everything on it, so instead of trimming all the way to the end, I'm just gonna cut it that way. That way I can keep that salvage intact. Now this part here, this is way useful fabric still. That is nice and large. It looks like it's gonna be about two and a quarter, two and a half inches. And also this batting, I'm gonna save this batting too. This little thin piece of black, I don't have any use for that. I have plenty of little thin strips of black so that can go in the trash. So normally I just pile this all up and when I'm done with the quilt, I go ahead and fold it all nice and neat and I put it in the appropriate scrap area or I can be conscientious and I can trim this up right away and put it into the scrap bin. But for now, I'm just gonna set these aside. Now I have to figure out this really wonky end. And what I wanna do is I wanna look for my low point. So this little owl square right here looks to be the shortest one that goes down. And we know we have a nice straight edge over there. So once again, I can line it up, my little black line on that, and I can just slide it down to where I know I got a little low spot here. So this block not only is it the lowest, but this part's higher than this part. Now that could just be because of the way it's sitting on the table. So I'll just slide down a little bit there and I'll check to see how it's lining up along here. And it looks like I'm in a reasonable spot there that's gonna be semi-even. I knew going into this that I was going to be cutting off a lot of excess fabric here. So I'm not really concerned and I knew I had extra batting and stuff. I just laid down a yard of fabric and I just cut, well, I had more than a yard. So I just laid it down, cut off what I needed and I kept that yard of fabric there. So I know it's a little bit wider or longer in different spots. So I'm just gonna go from there. We already know I have no problem with scraps. Chances are your quilt is gonna be closer to the end. You might only be off by a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch. This one drops down quite considerably. It looks like there's about a four inch difference. When I made this, I just sewed a whole bunch of these rectangles together. Well, rectangles and squares and a variety of different sizes. And then as I was sewing it into the quilt, I just went to a certain point and wherever it was that I can cut it off at the seam, that's where I cut it. So that's why I have such a big zigzag difference because these are all offset with different seams and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna come back over to this side so I can easily get to it. And I'm only gonna cut to where I'm comfortable. I don't wanna like reach all the way and lean forward because that's an easy way to go ahead and make a mistake. I don't want to accidentally cut my fingers and I don't wanna jinx myself by saying that right now, but I don't wanna accidentally cut myself. I don't want to get any weird wobbles on the quilt. This weight is holding the ruler down, but it's not perfect. It still slides easily, see? Because I only have one weight on it. If I had one on each end, it would be more comfortable to leave it that way. But for some reason, we only have one five pound weight in the house. So then once again, I slide it down. I line it up so that I'm good. I wanna make sure I have a decent amount of inches here. I don't wanna just try to line up and say, oh, okay, here's two inches that's lined up. Now that could work, but I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna give myself a good six inches or so and line it up like that. And I'm just gonna kind of look through here and see that everything's looking kind of good because sometimes we don't know if my black lines are perfectly straight. They could, my blocks could be off a little. So I wanna be like within an eighth of an inch. If I'm within an eighth on a quilt like this, this is a utilitarian quilt. This one's gonna get loved. When I wash it, it's gonna crinkle up from the cotton batting. Babies are gonna do what babies do on it. Toddlers are gonna run around in the mud with it and build forts. It doesn't need to be exactly perfect, but I would like to get it within a quarter of an inch, you know? 
Sometimes after I've trimmed three sides and I get to the fourth side, I find out how wonky I am and I have to go back and trim a little bit more. But that's why I like to put extra on my borders and make them a little bit wider. I can even, if I want that three inch border, I can even go up to five inches if I want because I can use anything extra in another project. If I make it wide enough, I can use it in my binding and plan ahead. So I just always try to make sure I give myself because I know when I'm doing the rebel quilting like this, that I'm going to have some issues. It's gonna to need to be squared up. I'm gonna make some mistakes. So let me go ahead and make it wide enough. It's not a waste of fabric for me because of the way I quilt and the style of stuff I do, I know I can use it in another project. I can use it in a bag. I can use it for anything, bookmarks, keychains. So it's not a waste to me. That fabric will get put good use. But when I'm doing wonky, crazy stuff like this, sometimes I have to go back and re-square up. So we, we're not gonna know until we get to our third and fourth side. Let me go ahead and cut this carefully. This is definitely not the best of an angle to be cutting on, but we do what we've got to do, right? Yes, I will change the blade, but I don't wanna change it now because I will do this whole process. If I put a new blade in now, it's gonna be a little bit dangerous for me. So I'm gonna deal with those little bit of nicks in it and I'm gonna work my way through it. Now, if that bunch is up down there, I mean, it, it does make it a little bit more complicated, but if I got a good 12 inches up here, I don't have to worry about it. It can do what it's gonna do. Line it up there. If I pull this like this, see how it's gonna pull on this fabric? So I do wanna keep this cut piece a little bit close, but not so close that I can't see what I'm doing. And I just, I just grab it with the tips of my fingers and my nails and I just kind of pull. It's easier I find to pull it down than it is to, you know, to push it back that way. And I just cut off the last section. Now this fabric is quilted down in the black areas, but I can go ahead and I can take my scissors and I can just trim off this piece. And now I'll have a perfectly good piece to use for something else. I can save almost any of these pieces. I might not want to save that or that, but most of these pieces are in perfectly good shape. And once again, I will have this whole big chunk here, including the salvages, that's about six inches. So I know I can get a, at least a five inch out of it, or if I wanna go down to a four inch strip, I can pop out this uh, quilting if I want so that I can use the entire piece. Yes, it's a little extra work, but when you're working in a scrap situation, it's something that you do. I can easily take my rotary cutter. I have a video for this. I'll see if I can find it, put in the iCard. And if I just keep my rotary cutter towards the batting side, it just really pops those stitches. And since it's cotton and we've done before where we've pulled out stitches, you know, we rip it all the time, do a little frog in here and there with our seam ripper, I now have another piece of fabric that's going to be perfectly good for a lot of blocks. I know I'm repeating myself with it. I just want you guys to know that if you're looking to build up your scraps and you're just making utilitarian quilts, that those pieces of fabrics are easy to reuse somewhere else. And I'm just gonna repeat this process all the way around. Lining it up on the end. And now we're back to having a black strip. So this is either the top or the bottom, depending on how you're looking at it. I think I made the squares so they can go either way. And I am going to try, since I did it one and a half on the other end, I wanna do one and a half here, and that's going to work fine for me. And I'm just going to cut it as far as I feel comfortable to where I can line it up. And if I have to only do every six inches, then that's what I'm going to do. I'd rather take small little bites of cutting now than to have to come back through and re-trim it all up. Because whatever I do on the top, I'm going to want to do on the bottom. So this isn't squared up all the way up to there, so I'm just going to stop here. slide it all down and reline things up again. 
we spent so much time on making the quilt that I think we can afford a little leniency in what it might take us to go ahead and get it trimmed up. Even the rebel way that I'm doing it, I still want to take my time and do the best I can. Now, if you've got a giant table you can work off of, it's going to be a lot easier. I have larger mats that sometimes when I'm doing a larger quilt, I'll put it on the kitchen floor and I'll trim it there. Normally, my tables are sitting out in the middle of the room and I have plenty of space to walk around it and trim in all different directions. But since I rearranged the room, I find myself up against the wall. But if you've been with me for a while, you know I haven't made a quilt to this point in a while. And some of you have never seen me make a quilt. See how good I was at trying to remember to close the cutter? Now this side I know it's more even because this is where I started sewing my rows together. So I can go pretty well to the end as long as everything looks good. I do have selvages on this end again, so I'm gonna be kind of nice to them. And put this in my pile. Now this is our fourth side. If I line it up with my line there, I can kind of just visualize where this one is all the way up here. When I'm on this side, I have it all the way up here. But as you can see, there's a really big difference like right here. So this one I might have to cut off. I did get a nice corner to start there and that's sometimes where the problem is that I run into. But I'll just go ahead and eyeball it and see what happens. This is my shortest spot here. Kind of look where it sits on my black if I need to move it and, you know, squish it around a little bit, but it looks good. Um, well, let's see how crazy we are at this corner right here. So even though I did this in a, in a rebel crazy way that I just kind of did it the way that works for me, as you can see, my quilt works perfectly square right there in that corner. So as I know right now, I can check that corner and know that that one's perfect. And once we finish cutting this off, I'll check the rest of mine to make sure they're in good shape. As I said, if it's a little bit close, close is better than perfect on a quilt like this. I'm not too concerned with. This isn't going out to be judged. It's not going into a quilt competition. It's gonna to go to some child, some baby, a toddler that needs a little extra comfort and love and it's gonna be fine. Now, when I get to this one, I'm gonna to want to line up my, my one of my black lines here and I'm gonna to wanna to line it up on here. And then I can adjust my quilt as needed to fit into that area. Because as I said, it's being pulled down here off the table. The end of the table is right here at the end of your vision, maybe about an inch past it. And then it's just not too much farther out of your view on the right side. So it's kind of hanging and sagging. So I'm just gonna readjust it so that it fits into my ruler in this section right here and I'm gonna ignore the rest of it. I'm just gonna squish and squish and move and twist and turn to get it to work out. And as you saw, it worked out pretty good on that last corner. Let's just hope it works out on the rest. Okay, when I line it up on this side, I have barely, barely not even, probably like a sixteenth of an inch that's just sticking out. Once the binding goes on and it gets washed, that's just gonna disappear and not be noticed.
And this corner is good too. And this corner also. Now, of course, I mean, if I go like this, I'm gonna pull this out of whack. I'm just going to be looking in this little section right here, maybe about four to six inches, because as we get further out, everything's just kind of moving around. You can lay it on a flat, you know, on your bed, on the floor, some type of flat surface to double check it. But that is it. This is now all even. It still needs to be defuzzed and stuff like that. Everything's looking pretty good that way. So now this can go ahead and get folded up and then I will go ahead and get the binding on this one. I want to go ahead and trim up the other one first. But that's how I trim up my quilt. Especially when it's something small like this, it's a tabletop or a wall hanging, bed runner, baby quilt, something small. I like to just go ahead and do it right here on the table. It saves on the back and the knees from getting down on the floor. I don't have a large table, like a dining room table that I can do it on. So this is what my options are. And I think it works out pretty good for me. As I said, while this is not the perfect way to do it, this works out really well for the utilitarian quilts. As long as you know that you have a reasonably straight line to follow, once you get that first corner cut, then you can easily just go ahead and follow it all the way around the quilt and get it squared up nicely. So I find this works out really well for me, especially when I'm just doing a simple utilitarian quilt like this. Everything lines up nicely. I've done it before when I've had quilt blocks. Actually, those are easier because then I can line it up to a quilt block to get everything to space nicely. So the next step up is to go ahead and put the binding on these quilts. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing how that does. Leave a comment down below. In case anyone's curious, there is a little bit of a small part of a block here. I am not worried about that. I am going to lose a good bit of it when I put the binding on. But once again, it's a scrappy quilt. There are going to be bigger blocks and smaller blocks, and I'm not going to worry about that. If I were to trim it down so that this piece was missing, then I would have this piece would be shorter and this piece would be shorter. And before I knew it, I would be chopping off a quarter of my quilt. So those are going to be fine. And it's going to be like a little bit of a secret spot for the kid to find these little hidden hearts or something like that. A cute little owl. All right, guys, that's it. I'll talk to you later. Bye.